as we talk about more compounds, we need to also understand how to name things beyond just our covalent compounds. So previously we talked about our covalent nomenclature and now let's take a look at our ionic nomenclature. All right, so ionic compounds. These are neutral compounds formed when we have an anion and a cation that come together in a ratio that balances out those positive and negative charges. So ionic compounds are neutral and so we have to charge balance to zero. When I look at cation names, which is the element name, so a sodium ion is just sodium ion, a calcium ion, calcium ion. Now, a lot of our elements have fixed charges, but a lot of elements do not have fixed charges. So our, L our metals in group 1A, they have one valence electron, they always form a plus one. Our metals in group 2A, they have two valence electrons, they always form a plus two. When I get over to 3A, I'm going to have three valence electrons. I'll form a plus three. <clears throat> when I get into my transition metals, though, uh, in between portion, those guys, they can form lots of different ions. And so I have to have a Roman numeral that tells me what their charge is. So like cobalt, sometimes cobalt does a plus three, sometimes cobalt does a plus two. And so in order to figure out which one I have, I have to have the charge in a Roman numeral there. So if I have cobalt three, it's a plus three charge. If I have cobalt two, it's a plus two charge. Now there's a few transition metals that have a fixed charge. Silver is always a plus one, so it doesn't get a Roman numeral. Cadmium and zinc are also fixed charges, they're always plus two, so they don't get Roman numerals, but the other transition metals do get Roman numerals. Okay, for my non-metals, those are my anions, and so to name those, it's just the element, an IDE ending, and then ion. So nitrogen is nitride, oxygen, oxide, sulfur, sulfide, chlorine, chloride. Now I know the ions these form also because of the valence electrons. When atoms bond, they want to get to eight electrons. And so I have to look at how many electrons I'm missing. So nitrogen has five valence electrons. Everything in group 5A has five valence electrons. If I need to get to three, I mean, if I need to get to eight, I have to add in three more electrons. And electrons are negative, which is where the minus charge comes from. So if I have five valence electrons, I'll make a minus three ion. If I have six valence electrons, I need two more, I make a minus two. So that's my group 6A. My group 7A, they need one more, so they make a minus one ion. <clears throat> okay, and so these, I just name the cation and then the anion and this IDE ending. Okay, so we can look at a few examples. So let's see if we can figure out what some of these are. So magnesium and nitrogen. Okay, so magnesium is in group 2A, so it's going to make a plus 2. Nitrogen's in group 5A, it needs 3 more, so it'll do the minus 3. Okay, so again, we need to get to zero. Okay, so I have some number of magnesiums each at plus two, plus some number of nitrogens each at minus three. Give me zero. So what number can I divide, you know, two and three into six? So I would need three plus twos and two minus threes, so I get a plus six and a minus six. So my formula would be Mg3 and two, and it would be magnesium nitride. Okay, all right, and so that's how we go about, and it, you know, I've got lovely periodic table on my wall there. Um, if you have a periodic table in front of you, you can look up what each of these are. Um, let's see here. As a chemistry professor, I have periodic tables everywhere. <laughs> if you don't have one that you have super convenient, if you get out your textbook, okay, all chemistry textbooks have a periodic table. So we would have one right here. So if I look here, I'd have strontium and fluorine. So strontium is SR, 
So I'd look, oh look, strontium is also in group 2A. So makes a plus two. Fluorine, if I look here, oh, it's group 7A. So it needs one more, so it'd be the minus one. So I have some number at plus two, plus some number at minus one equals zero. Okay, the easy number there is two, so I'd have one strontium and two fluorine, so I'd get SRF2 for strontium fluoride. Okay, all right, iodine and cadmium. Now, we always put the cation then the anion, even if you put, you know, this in a different order. So cadmium, I just told you, the transition metal that's always a plus two. Iodine's group uh, 7A, okay? And so by our balancing, we should get a CDI2 for cadmium. Iodide. <clears throat> Okay, sulfur and cesium. Cesium is CS. If we look on the periodic table, it's over here in group 1A. So it's a plus one. Sulfur is group 6A. So it's a minus two. We would balance our charge and we get CS2S and we get cesium sulfide. Okay. All right, so we can keep practicing these. Okay, so mercury to chloride, so mercury transition metal to, we get that. If we charge balance it, we get HgCl2. Cadmium again, nitride, okay. Okay, potassium, group 1A, so plus 1. Bromine, group 7A, minus 1, so potassium bromide is just KBr. Okay, there's another Roman numeral, iron 3, so that tells me that it's an iron with a plus 3 charge. Oxide, oxygen's group 6A, so the minus 2. Okay, so we get, okay, and then 10. Okay, we get that Roman numeral, so we know it's a plus two. And then fluoride is that group 7A, so it's a minus one, so it'd be Okay. All right, and then we can take our uh, formulas and come up with their names. Okay, so MgCl2, magnesium, is a main group, so it's just magnesium chloride. Now note that I'm not capitalizing these things, so here's a note for you. Chemical names are not proper nouns. So we don't capitalize. Okay. All right. Now, CR, chromium, that's going to be in that transition metal. So I need to know what Roman numeral to give it. I have one chromium and I have three iodides. Okay. So I have one chromium at some charge plus three iodides each at a minus one charge and I need to get to zero so what charge does that chromium have to have in order for this to equal zero the chromium has to have a plus three charge so I would get chromium three iodide okay now lead, it's under the stair step. It behaves like the transition metals. It also needs a Roman numeral, okay? So I have 
one lead at some charge plus two oxides each at a minus two charge gives me a zero okay so two times minus two gives me minus four i only have one lead so what charge does the lead have the lead has to have a plus four so this is lead four oxide okay rb that's rubidium it's group 1a it has a fixed charge we don't need a roman numeral so it's just rubidium oxide and then silver it's one of the transition metals with a fixed charge we don't need a roman numeral so this is just silver sulfide okay now we do have some situations where we have some polyatomic ions okay so polyatomic ions i have a group that stays together as a whole charged unit if i have more than one polyatomic ion in a formula then i have that in parentheses with a subscript so let's say i had um a, a mag well i'll do it on this side <laughs> um and then so let's say i have the hydroxide ion okay hydroxide is right here okay so let's say i have a couple hydroxide compounds let's say i have sodium hydroxide okay sodium in group 1a would be a plus one and then hydroxide is that minus one so i would just get naoh so there's my sodium hydroxide now let's say I had a magnesium hydroxide. So I had my magnesium and then my hydroxide, okay? Well, now I need two of those hydroxides to get my charge balance. So I'd get magnesium, parentheses, close parentheses, and then the two to show that I have a total of two hydroxides there. Now, there are a ton of polyatomic ions. There's a whole lot more than are on this list. For this course, for Chemistry 111 at San Diego City College, all you need to know is this list right here. Okay, I'm not gonna make you responsible for a whole slew of other polyatomic ions. For this course, this is all I expect you to know, is just this small group of polyatomic ions. Okay, so I'm trying to make it manageable for you. All right, so know these. These are some of the more common ones. Okay. All right, so let's practice a few here. All right, aluminum hydroxide. So aluminum, group 3A, it's going to make that plus 3. Hydroxide, we just learned, is that OH minus? So we get AL, OH, 3. Okay, and then again, as you're looking through these, if you need to refer to your periodic table, have that in front of you. Okay, barium is in group 2A acetate you can write it like this you can also write it okay that both work i always write it the ch3coo because of different ways that i have learned to understand acetate um and so you would get Okay, again, whole polyatomic ion goes in the parentheses. Okay, sodium, group 1A, so it's that plus one. Nitrate is NO3 with a minus. So sodium nitrate is just NaNO3. <clears throat> okay, nickel 2, Roman numeral tells me it's a plus two, and sulfate like that so they are already charge balanced so n i s o four so notice i don't use the parentheses if i only have one of the polyatomic ion group okay and then my last one my chromium three and then that nitrate again so i would get parenthesis n o three and i need three of them okay so that's the basics to our ionic nomenclature